Hi everyone, welcome back. It's five o'clock, so I hope that you know you will soon join us, uh, those of you who are outside, because here at the Blue Stage we have the pleasure of in uh, of having Paul Paula Stern with us. She is the CEO of WritePoint Limited, and she will talk about technical writing. So Paula comes from Israel, and uh, she is uh, uh, sadly going back to her country. Uh, this evening and won't be able to see all the beauties of Belgrade, but let's give her a warm Belgrade welcome anyway And uh, she will be yours for the next 35 minutes and like every uh, after every other talk She will be on the Q&A at the heap space stand That's on. Okay Thank you. Okay, so my first request is can we reverse the room around? Can everybody who's sitting in the back come forward? Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. Come forward this way, like we can talk, because right now I see a bunch of sort of heads back there. So if you're willing to come forward, that would be, I thank you very much. Okay, so while we're doing that, let me quickly in, in one minute tell you a little about myself. This is the slide I hate the most. Um, I've been a technical writer, I sh probably shouldn't tell you because all you guys look pretty young, but um, for 25 years, um, I, as he said, CEO of WritePoint. What's important here is that I'm the daughter of an engineer and the wife of an engineer. Not exactly computer, but similar mindset from what I've seen. And I am not an engineer. I am a technical writer. I love writing. I don't love engineering stuff, sort of. Um, are there any technical writers here? One, hey, nice, okay. How many of you have ever been forced to write some documentation? There you go, see that's what I was expecting, okay. Um, how many of you work with technical writers in your company? Good, less than I thought, but okay. All right. Um, how many of you think, now here's a clue, you're supposed to all raise your hand, okay? I'm just telling you that in advance. Do what you want, but okay. So how many of you think that the overall product you deliver is better as a result of the documentation? All right, I'll get to the rest of you guys later. Okay. Um, so let's, let's go on. Wait, one more question. How many of you think, excuse my language, how many of you think technical writers are pains in the ass? Come on, come on. Thank you to the honest ones and the rest of you guys, come on. All right, so what I wanna talk about today is defining how we technical writers work with developers, what we do to contribute to this dance that I call documentation, what our workflow is so you can understand how we think and then you can tell me how you think because I've been married for 35 years this week, last week actually, and I have no clue how engineers think. They, they have this mind thing. Okay, I'd like to talk about what we expect from you and what you expect from us. So the first thing is that writers and engineers are actually involved in a tango, in a dance. and. If we don't work together, if we dance alone, the product suffers. So the question is, how do we work together? So the first question is, who leads the dance? Raise your hand. Do you think the engineers, the developers lead this dance? I expected more hands than that. Okay, how many people think technical writers lead the dance? Okay, I have the pleasure of telling you that all the people who didn't raise their hands at all, you were right because the answer really is both. We can't do it on our own, and I don't think you can do it on your own. You lead in development without question. You tell us not what to write, but what's ready to be written. What's been frozen, what have you finished developing? And that was the ideal time to do, develop it. When we develop things that aren't yet frozen, we find you guys keep changing it. Have you noticed that? That you just like keep changing things and changing things? Um, you explain, you are the people with the knowledge, and we are the people who have to get that knowledge. And it isn't always pleasant. There is another big difference, I think, that is very important. And that is that you focus on what? I think you focus on the product, on what you're developing. Is that true? Yes, no? We focus on the user, and that's what's important. In theory, you do too, but how many of you have ever spoken to a user of your product? One, two, three, four, five. Okay. How many of you have never spoken? There you go. 
Okay. Not that we speak to them, but we're at least a little closer in theory to what they, where they are. Okay, so what do we contribute to this dance? Well, obviously the documentation, without question. I think we also bring a new perspective to the product because we're looking at it from a different angle. And the question is, when we deliver something or when we meet with you, are your expectations accurate? Do you accurately understand what we're going to deliver and what we need from you? In my experience, not so much. You look at the product a certain way, and how many of you, show of hands, how many of you think your product is intuitive? Not one? Okay, there we go, few people. Okay, so the rest of you need to work on that, because it's supposed to be intuitive to some extent, depending on what it is. Um, how many of you think you know, when you're at a certain feature, what the user is going to do next? No? Okay. So one of the things that you can do is we can be your first user. And I'll talk more about this later, but we are your first user in a lot of ways. You should be watching us to see what we do. Don't explain to us and see what happens. Explain to us and see what happens. Okay? The big issue is what happens when the people who are responsible for programming meet the people who are responsible for using and explaining it. Um, and I'll example. Um, I don't, anybody speak Hebrew here? I do. Anybody else? No. Okay. Hebrew is the reverse, it goes in the reverse direction. So English goes from the left to the right, Hebrew goes from the right to the left. And I was sitting with a developer one time and I kept feeling something is wrong. There's something wrong with this product. And he's explaining it's a very interesting product. It's, an ant it's, it's a lie detection software. So it was made many years ago and you have a stone or something that like a paperweight you put on your desk. And then you have your screen here and the other person is facing you and you're interviewing them for a job or something. And as you're asking them questions, the screen that they can't see is saying that they're lying, that they're embarrassed, that they're hiding something. And this is, I, I hated the software. And as he was explaining to me and I was looking at it, I thought, what is wrong with this software? And then I suddenly realized, and it hit me and I said to him, you did the software in Hebrew. And he looked at me and said, what are you talking about? It's in English. I said, no, it's not. You started creating the inf inter interface from the right. So as an English speaking person, the first thing that I saw was the exit because the exit was the thing most to the left, which if you notice, the exit is usually other than Microsoft, it's usually on the right. You know, you log out, whatever, it's, it's all the way on the right because that's the last thing you want the person to do and the last thing you want the person to see. So this was something that a technical writer, somebody new to the system would see, whereas this guy just hadn't seen it. Obviously, the other thing that we contribute is we're the language experts, whether it's English or some other language, that's our thing, that's what we do. And we represent the end user, and we also do QA. A lot of times we'll find something. For example, how many of you work as the only, tech, as the only engineer or developer in your company? Okay, very few. Most of you are in teams, right? So a lot of times what happens is that the teams are responsible for different aspects of the development of the product, right? And then what sometimes happens is that how they program it is different. So for example, I was using an application one time and you know, everywhere you had to click to do the next step and in one place you had to hover. And I said to them, no one's gonna know to hover because everywhere they're clicking. It's not logical to use the hover feature and the click feature in the same interface. How are they supposed to know? And this was something that this had gone through the entire engineering team. It had gone through the QA and it didn't bother anybody until I brought it up. So these are something that the technical writers tend to see and you can take advantage of that and that would help. Um, okay, and what we don't offer is we're not the product experts, that would be you, but we are the user experts. We don't set priorities or roadmaps or schedules. We are as much a slave to those things as you are, if not more. We have no say in them. And so we need certain things from you according to the schedule and according to the roadmap that we didn't set either. And we don't get to choose the features that we have to document. We don't choose the order in which we document them. And we definitely don't write code or correct code. 
But what we can do is sometimes find an error. Now, we may or may not know where that error is. We know something's wrong. So I had a developer give me a sort of the code and the demo that went along with it step by step to explain what was happening in the code. And I realized that something was wrong, they didn't match, and I wasn't sure what. So I called up the developer and he said to me, well, obviously you wrote the demo wrong. I said, okay, could you help me anyway? So about halfway through, all of a sudden he said, I have to go now. I said, we didn't finish. He said, the demo is fine, it's the code. So I had no way of knowing that there was a code error, but I enough had experience to know that there was something that didn't match. Um, and another one that I loved, when I was looking at the, at the, um, at the text of the, of the code, and all of a sudden I saw a word which I knew wasn't right, and the word was, what well, should have been denial, and it said it was denial. The A and the I had been reversed. So I went to the program and I said, denial is a very painful thing, taking out a nail, and I think you mean denial. And he said, I, it, do, it doesn't matter. I said, yeah, it really does, and you need to fix it. And so that's another thing that I want to tell you, that English does matter, or the spelling does matter, and if there's a mistake in the code, so in the end what he did was he simply created another function, denial, and he left the denial in case anybody had actually used it, and that was up to him. But these are things that also we can do. The next thing I want to talk about is the general workflow. What's our workflow? How do we work? And how can you work with us and integrate your, your work and your time into our schedule? And then how we can sort of integrate ours into helping you as well. So the first thing that we do when we need to document something is we need to meet with the experts. And that might be you. That might the mar be the marketing department. For example, you know how to do something with your product. Do you know why? Do you know why a user would use this feature? You've been told to program a feature. You've been told how to program it. You've been given the parameters of the feature. Have you been told why an end user would use that feature? I think the answer is sometimes yes and sometimes no. So we might meet with you. We might meet with the marketing department or tech support or somebody. That's another added level of the product that we need to know that you may not need to know. But we need to meet and get all of that. And then what we do is we make an outline. And then we do something horrible. We give that outline to you. And we ask you to look at it. Because this is the outline of the document that we're going to write. Now, if you ignore the outline, and a lot of times you do, you know, I'll, I'll forgive you because I'm not working with you, but a lot of times you ignore that outline. Later, when you get the document that we're going to ask you to read, that's not the time to tell us the structure's all wrong because the structure is based on the outline that we gave you. So it's a good idea if we send you an outline for you to look at the outline. And then we start meeting again for longer periods of time. And I'll talk about the meetings we have with you guys. And what we do is we begin to prepare the text. The first thing we do is we say to you, what's finished? What have you finished developing? We're not going to write the manual, chapter one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if it's actual manual, or if it's health, top, if it's health topics. Still, we have some sort of a structure. We're not going to begin at the beginning. We're going to begin with whatever you have finished. So it's important from our standpoint for you to tell us that, okay, I finished with this, and, and we'll go forward with there. And we write the document, and then we do another horrible thing. We give it to you, and we ask you to look at it. Now, really, we only ask you to look at it once, at least that time. And we need you to read it totally and completely. And then we make changes. And that's the first time. From then on, we should be using some form of track changes or some way so that you don't have to read the whole thing all over again. And then we QA the document. That's what we do. That has nothing to do with you. And then the product gets released, whether it's in whatever format. If it's video documentation, then you would check over the script, perhaps, and maybe you'd see the video at the end. If it's help, you, you don't really have to go through all the help files. We can generate some sort of a you know, physical document, not physical in print, but some sort of a document where all of the stuff is together in sort of PDF or whatever. So that's what we do. Um, then there's your side of this. What is your workflow? 
I'm pretty sure that with a lot of you, your workflow would have nothing to do with us. You've got to meet with the roadmap, you've got to develop the, the, the project, you've got to do whatever you're going to do that developers do. The question is, does it include time to meet with us? Do you factor that in? Because you need to. We can't do our job without your help. So you need to factor in. Now, if you're working in some sort of agile development, how many are? Good, a lot of you, okay. So I was working with a company and they were moving into agile. They hadn't been before. And they said to me, we need you to move in with agile. And I said, okay, but if we're gonna do that, then we need to fa factor in you know, time from the freeze of the, of the features to the document. So in the end, what we agreed was that there would be a two week delay or a, essentially a, we would be responsible to deliver the document one sprint after the sprints were two weeks. We had to deliver the, the document with the next sprint. And in the end, what we found was that didn't work. And the reason it didn't work was because of you guys. Because after you finished with the features from this sprint and you moved on, you didn't want to spend time on the old features. And so we had to change our workflow. This is not you specifically, obviously. This is sort of developers and technical writers together. And then after a couple of weeks and even maybe even months of working with the developers and each time interrupting the, the meetings to say, wait, you're adding a new window. That means you need to come to me to write the text for the window. So that became another task. And okay, you're doing this, wait, you need me to do that. And you need to do this, wait, tech, you know, documentation comes in here as well. And after a couple of weeks, I didn't have to do that anymore because the engineers around the table would suddenly say, stop, wait, Paula has to do this. Or this element of the product involved the technical writer as well. So that's something that when you're allocating time and you're factoring in what you're going to be doing, you need to factor in the documentation. If you're using JIRA or something like that, you need to create tasks for the documentation as well. And part of the task for the documentation involves time from the engineers. Okay, so here's where we talk about the sort of dance together part of this, okay? We, as technical writers, recognize what we do and the part it takes in the company. And we also recognize the part that you do. We understand what engineers do. So we are, for the most part, willing to do a, to whatever we need to do according to your preferences, but you have to make them known. So tell your technical writer how you want to work with them. Do you want them to randomly drop by whenever they have a question? That's gonna interrupt you, but they can. Or do you want them to schedule meetings? Tell the technical writer, communicate with them, and they will go according to your rules. You say, I can have one hour meetings, you can set them regularly, or, or they can be upon request. And how long do you want those meetings to be? And you can't say five minutes. So maybe a half an hour, maybe an hour. It depends on you, it depends on your patience. Okay, and give that time to them, set, and then decide another thing. I have a list of things that I need to ask you. You've allocated an hour. I have another five things or another 10 things. Do you want to continue? Do you want to stop now and schedule another one? It goes according to your preferences. And that's what's important. And a lot of engineers don't do that. And they end up, you know, technical writers, as we're walking down the hallway, we see the engineers running away. And we know that it's not because you're going to the coffee, get coffee. We understand why you're running away. So if you tell us how you want to give us the information, you have to give it to us, then we can work with you better. We can also work by email, but we have a question. Do you want one email with like 50 line items of questions that we've come up with? Or do you want five items in it? Do you want us to send one email every time we have a question and you get interrupted a lot? Or if we give you one that has 50 items, are you actually gonna go through it? Or are you then are gonna call us in and say, okay, um, what were your questions? I had an email I sent you and I created. So these are the things that you need to tell us in order for us to dance together. When's the best time to meet? How do you want us to give you a document for revisions? Do you wanna work in Word? Do you wanna work in PDF? 
I had an engineer tell me I should print it. I said no. But how do you want to work? Okay. Um, okay. Do you want to review every single version of the document? Do you only want us in some way to single out the, the new stuff? And here's an important one. How long do you need before you'll give us the, the information? Is it a day or two days? Whoa. That came up. One second. Okay. That was fine. All right. Um, how long do you need for your review? Are you going to give it to us in a day, a week, a month? Um, and what happens if you tell us a deadline and you don't make it? What do you want us to do? Do you want us to call you, email you, WhatsApp you? Um, do you want to be bribed? Do you like cookies? What flavor? You need to communicate and tell us how we're supposed to get this information from you because ultimately this is part of your job. It's not the best part, but it is, a, it is part of it. Um, okay, so in short, here's what we want from you. If I can speak for all technical writers at this moment, here's what you have to do as engineers. You ready? Yes, everyone awake? This is the important part. Number one, you have to be prompt in responding to all of our emails. These are very important. You need to respond to all of them. We need an immediate turnaround. We have deadlines that we have to do, and we expect you to take care of this. We even expect you to stop any further development because we need that time. Everybody listening? Okay. We don't want you to review our English or our writing. We want you to review what we wrote and give us your feedback on the features. And we want you to trust us to know what needs to be documented. Don't tell us that we should write this document or that document. Don't tell us what should go into it or that or whatever, okay? And trust us that we know what doesn't belong in the document. Don't tell us put this in the document to tell the user this. We know all that. You got all that? Yes? Okay, I'm just kidding. We don't really expect you to do that. So what do we really expect? First of all, we'd like some responses to our emails. Kind of, please. You know, like just tell us, yes, okay, I'll get back to this tomorrow, next week, I have a deadline. We're very reasonable people, mostly, so just tell us, answer it. We'd like to know that you've received the document, that you're going to send the comments and extra points if you actually do send them. I don't know what you can do with the points, but you know, do you have ways in this country? Do you use Waze? Anybody know what Waze is? Oh my God, seriously? Okay, Waze.com, it's a user-friendly, um, it's a social GPS system. And if you use it, it will tell you where you have to go. It's a great invention, use Waze. Um, and Waze has a point system. If you report that a policeman is there, if you report traffic, or that there's somebody on the side of the road, you get points. No one knows what the points are for. You can't win anything, but so we have points too. Okay, um, we don't expect you to drop everything ever, um, but sometime this week or next week would be really, really nice. And, and what we live for, what we absolutely live for is when the project manager turns around to the developer and says, listen, I know you're under pressure, but you need to stop and, and answer her questions. We like live for that. We frame it on the wall. That one and the other thing when, they, when an engineer says to us, you know, you explain that really well because that's our job. Okay. S what else do we want? Well, we actually don't want you to review our English or our writing. So that one was kind of true. Um, you're, we're the experts in English. And if you really are sure we made a mistake, then tell us. Okay, but if you're not sure, then let it go. I had an engineer one time tell me, it's a great document, everything's fine, except for the spelling mistakes. Now, if you tell spelling mistakes to a technical writer, you've just like ruined their life. So I said, spelling mistakes? What spelling mistakes? So he said to me, tables and clues. I said, tables and clues? All right, let me, okay, I'll, I'll fix and I'll send it back to you. So I did a search for tables. I didn't find anything. I did a search for includes. I found something. I didn't know what he was talking about. And then I finally realized, wait a minute, everywhere it says table, 
it says table includes, that's proper English, or tables include. This is um, Israeli Russian engineer, and in Hebrew, the, like, the equivalent of the S is on both the noun and the verb. So it's tables includes in Hebrew. I have no idea what it is in Russian. Maybe somebody can tell me. But in English, it's not. In English, it's table includes or tables include. In other words, one has the S. So I wrote him and I explained it to him. And he wrote back, are you sure? So leave English to us if you can. I had another guy that kept correcting my English. And I finally went to the product manager and I said, I don't know what to do. I have all this huge amount of corrections that he made that aren't corrections. So he said, ignore them. Yeah, but I have to go through them. And you should trust us to know what has to be documented. That one is kind of true. We'll listen, but for the most part, we know what documents the, the users need. And we also know what doesn't belong in. For example, I had an engineer who said to me, and this version that we're now releasing supports Red Hat version, whatever it was. So I thought it sounded familiar, and I checked, and sure enough, in the previous release, we had told them that the product supports Red Hat version, whatever it was. So I went back to the engineer, and I said, that's already in the document. It was in last time. And he answered, I know, but it didn't work last time. Okay. So you have to tell them that it works now. I said, wait, so you want me to write that, hey, we lied to you when we told you that it worked before, and it didn't, but now it really does. He said, yes. I said to him, no, <laughs> because new, new users aren't going to know it didn't work. And the old ones who already read it are going to say, oh, it says it. I'll try it again. Oh, it works. Maybe I was wrong and go forward. No, he, said, he spent weeks making it work. And he felt if he spent that time, it was only validated if I actually wrote it, which was very complimentary. But no, I didn't put it in. Can you, what can you expect from us? Number one, we can help you write the interface text properly, actually, or more concisely or something. That's what we do. We can help organize the flow of information in the document, but also sometimes even in the workflow of the product. Um, we can QA the product, even if you don't want us to. We're probably going to do that. I had one company where mostly what I do is I used to open up a document, and I used to call it Problems Doc, and whenever I found something that worked in a weird way, I would sort of just dump it in there, and then at some point I would give it to the company or to the engineer, and one guy got very angry with, oh no, sorry, I used to call it Bugs Doc, and he got very angry that I was telling him about bugs, and he said, listen, if you want to tell me about problems, okay, so I saved the document as Problems Doc, and from then on he loved it, so... Whether it's problems or bugs, we find them. And we've, we know enough that when the system suddenly crashes, we know what we did, because otherwise it frustrates you when we tell you we did something and it crashed. So we know that that doesn't help, so we try to keep track of what we do so we can help. And we can help you determine what the end user needs in terms of actual deliverables. Okay, and you can help us in this dance of bringing the product to life by making yourselves available, by answering our questions, explaining features, clarifying appropriate team members that are working on whatever feature so we know who to ask. The most frustrating thing is to go to an engineer and explain to him exactly what we need and for him to say, oh, right, okay, you need him. So why didn't you tell me that before? All right, and if you can accept our expertise, that would be helpful because I think that we do ex accept yours. So real quick synopsis of all of these things. Please do, number one, share all the resources. If you have engineering documents, if you have specifications, s share them with us. Maybe we'll use them, maybe we won't, but there's information there. And any information you give to us means you have to give us less verbal instructions. And as I said, make yourselves available, answer our questions, explain what we need, and do tell us what you think of the documentation, mostly. Um, and consider the documentation when you're scheduling yourselves. Please don't change features without alerting us. It's very frustrating when we open up the interface and we find a new button that we know nothing about. And even more funny is when you go and you ask the product manager and he says, no, no, that's the feature isn't in yet. It is, it's in the development. No, it's not, yes it is, look, wait. And then he goes back and has it taken out. So if you put something new in, it's helpful if you can tell us. Sometimes, you know, I don't know how it is here, but in Israel, if you get a bunch of engineers together, they do something. They, they add something every time, and it's 
very frustrating. Um, please don't turn off track changes. We turned them on for a reason. If we have to go figure out what you add to the document, it, it's not good. And please don't put in the document, even with track changes, things like this feature probably doesn't belong in this, in this product or something like that, because you never know what can go in. Um, don't ignore the value of technical writers, that what we can add to be part of the team. And don't change the schedule without telling us. And I think that's all that I want to do. One second. Um, let's see what else. I think that's it. Ah, yes, there was one example. Um, we had, there was a program that I documented and that had an Outlook plugin that was being added. And we fully documented the whole thing. And like a day before that was released, they came and they said, document, it's not ready on the development side, so you have to take it out of the documentation completely. So if you think a feature isn't going to be ready, tell us in advance, because that's helpful. Um, so I think that's it in terms of technical writers. If there's any questions, you can find me wherever. Or yes? OK? All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Sorry. Okay.